Hello everyone, welcome to Pumpkin Horror. <clears throat> now I'm going to tell you a little story here. I end up ordering this just a few days ago, but wasn't expecting it for, to come in until uh, this Tuesday. But I heard a thunk on the front porch and I'm like, what the heck is that? So I checked it out. It was uh, FedEx. They dropped it off a lot earlier than expected, which is a good thing. So that's what we're going to be talking about here today. This is the Trick or Treat Studios version of the Frankenstein Monster Mask. So what we're going to do is we're going to get into a close inspection on this thing. We're going to check it out inside as well as, um, you know, unique features about this particular mask. Now before we get into this, I am going to get my other mask and show you the other one too. So I'm going to throw this into the mix and show you the other Frankenstein mask that I do have. So keep that in mind. I will be right back. Here's looking at you, kid. No, I'm just kidding. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the mask in itself, and then I'm going to go over my other masks that I do have. Okay, that's kind of weird seeing that, but anyway. Um, so, let's get into this mask here, and then we'll jump into the other ones. Alright, and now as you can see, let's start off with the eyes, okay. There are slight little holes in it. Now, I haven't tried this on, which I'm going to do right now just so I can see how well it fits and then I'll show you what it looks like okay I'll take out the glasses okay okay all right now as you can see here let me just turn this around so I can see what I need doing all right hang on there we go. All right, now. Oh, hang on for a second now. Okay. All right, now as you can see. And I will tell you this about the mask, wearing it. It really is snug around the eyes to the point that it pokes your eyes. And as you can hear, not a very good one to fucking say anything in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it off and we'll talk about it, okay? Alright, hang on. Alright, I think I grew out of it somehow. Woo! Okay. Enough about that, okay? So now, with that in mind, turn this baby back around. And we're going to put him back on his styrofoam head, which is not completely stuffed yet. But I just wanted to give you an idea of what he looks like when you wear it. Okay. All right. So that, we are going to talk about the mask in itself. Now, when I wore it, okay, in the eyes, it really fits snug around the bridge of your nose to the point that it pokes your eyes. And that can be not a good thing if you've got a big head. If you've got a smaller head, I'm sure it would fit nice. But because I have a bigger head than uh, average, uh, it's not super tight, but it's just the way it fits around the bridge of your nose. And these uh, right here inside, probably little bumps on the other side that kind of poke at your eyes. Uh, that can be a bad thing, but it's not a bad thing. It, I mean, it feels all right. But it felt a little suffocating too because obviously... There's no holes in the mouth, okay? Alright. But there is a little bit of holes in the nose as well as the eyes. So it does make it hard to breathe a little bit. So keep that in mind. Obviously, if you get a smaller head, you'll breathe a little bit better. But anyway, let's talk about the actual scar here. The coloring on this thing, absolutely amazing. Now, I don't know who actually did this Frankenstein mask, but it is from Trick or Street Studios. I think it probably says it on the tag here. Now, you see this here, particular tag. I end up getting the NECA figure based on Frankenstein. Uh, the video is located on this channel. You might want to check that out if you're into Frankenstein. Okay, now obviously it gives you the warnings and the directions on how to take care of it, the whole nine yards. It always comes with these kind of things. Okay, now like I said, it does have holes in the nostrils as well as holes in the eyes. Now when you're looking out of it, because it's tight on my face it looks good uh, but your peripherals obviously when you turn it's fine because it fits snug on your face 
but if you get a real small head and you try to wear this it's going to be kind of hard to see uh, peripheral wise because very similar to my creature from the Black Lagoon that's a big mask and it fits fantastic but it has these little eye holes so you can't really see from side to side unless you shift the mask this would be the same way with a guy with a very small head I'm sure that would happen but if you get a tight head like I do it fits nice but it's hard to breathe out of because there's no breathing apparatus through the mouth okay so it does make it hard to breathe alright here's the scar right? along his chin okay because obviously he's been stitched up you got ear holes too as well like I said the color scheme is absolutely amazing it's got dark green around the eyes a little bit of black okay scar up here the hair in itself this is the only mask other than this other mask that I do have that has I don't know like real type hair going on when it comes to this the other ones are all molded in one you know they look all plastic put that way right, but that's what it looks like in the back and pull back here all right. All right now in the back here as you can see works its way all the way up to the top there all right so it, you can fit a big head but it will be a tight fit so keep that in mind it's got the electrodes I don't know what you want to call those things but most of the Frankenstein masks do have those with a few exceptions here what I'm going to show you here okay but that is my Frankenstein mask from Trick or Treat Studios all right. All right. The actual detail is really nice on this thing. Now, one thing about the mask in itself is the thickness. Semi thick, as you can see. It's not bad. All right. It's got a decent thickness to it. And it does feel comfortable, but like I said, for a big face or a big head, it fits tight, put it that way. Especially around the eyes, that's not a good thing, okay? If you got a smaller head, it would fit perfect, okay? But like I said, when it comes to the peripherals, if you got a small head, you're probably going to have to shift or move your uh, mask in order to see from side to side in some aspects. It depends. You just got to wear it in order to find out, okay? But that is my Frankenstein mask that I just got in today from Trick or Treat Studios, okay? So with that in mind, let's go ahead and get him out of the way, and I'm going to show you this next one here, which is not a mask at all. This is, in fact, a ceramic outdoor Frankenstein, and it does have some weight to it. Yeah, as you can see, he is pretty big. Okay. Now, I got that at CVS uh, about two years ago. All right. I actually picked this one up. And it does light up, which I'll show you here right now. Let me see if it still works or not. Let me get a grip on that. Huh? All right. There we go. And that's what she looks like lit up. Okay. Now, as you can see, it is a Frankenstein mask, except the electrodes are up on the forehead. They make them a little bit different. You're going to see in these other masks that I show you that there is, in fact, where the electrodes are a little bit different. Okay or whatever you want to call this side shock things All right. but it is uh, made of some kind of um, outdoor porcelain type thing I'm not sure what kind of material it's made out of maybe a resin or something okay so it's not a plastic or anything you can uh, set these outside but I don't do that because obviously it's Halloween and I leave it inside but anyway that is my ceramic or whatever kind of material it's made out of Frankenstein I also got a mummy like that. I actually went back to CVS 20 minutes later and picked that one up. And the reason I did that because I knew it would not be there after a while. And I got lucky and found it there. But there's also a Dracula one, which I do not have. Okay, unfortunately I don't have that one. Maybe I can order it online, but I choose not to. Okay, now, getting into another mask. This one here, okay, that is a Frankenstein slash zombie mask. As you can see, the electrodes are right on the side of the head this time. He's very heavy scarred. I'm going to show you what it looks like up close. But I got this one from Spirit Halloween, and it was like $35 at the time that I got it. So let me just bring this down. 
see what it looks like. Okay, it's got deep, heavy scarring. Now I do have another video on this channel that shows you these masks, except with the exception of the one I just showed you in the beginning. That's the only reason I'm doing this because I'm showing you the entire collection that I have so far based on Frankenstein. Okay. Now that says made in Mexico, so this must be a Ghoulish Productions mask. There's not too many companies in Mexico that make um, masks other than Ghoulish Productions. And their masks, no offense, uh, they're actually not half bad for the price. And I got some pretty cool looking ones out there. I do have a list sitting on my Amazon uh, Prime list or Amazon list. I will eventually start ordering them again once we get financially situated again. But they have some decent pricing ones and there's some pretty cool looking masks out there. Trick or Treat Studios in themselves, they kind of raise prices on certain masks like uh, Halloween Kills, the new Michael Myers mask when it's burnt. And that one up 10 bucks. So obviously now it's in, in a sense, it's out of my price range. I'll wait for it to drop further down the line before I pick that up. Okay? But anyway, this is the zombie slash, or I mean the Frankenstein slash zombie mask. Okay, it's got stitching and everything, staples. It's a pretty cool looking mask, and it fits nice too for the most part. Alright, enough about him. Oh, oh, oh. Alright, now, this guy right here is another one I got from Amazon. And now as you can see, he's very cool looking, okay? He's got a very cool looking design to him. Yeah, upon, let me get that out of the way there. Let me get these situated here. Put Herman Munster over here. I'm going to show you that in a second. Alright. Put him on the ground. Get him out of the way. Alright. And this guy's shifting on me. So let's give you a close-up look of this guy here. Now this is just temporarily stuffed. I do have a styrofoam head in the back. And a key factor when it comes to styrofoam heads and your latex, latex masks, you want to actually cover the actual styrofoam with plastic to protect it from the latex because what styrofoam does is it sucks the moisture out of your latex mask and it will crack a lot earlier than it needs to be. So cover your uh, styrofoam head with plastic or something, and then stuff your um, mask over top of it. So keep that in mind. Yeah, styrofoam has a tendency to pull moisture out of a mask. Mm -hmm. He's got big lips. I like the skin texture, the way it droops and everything. It's kind of aged. All right. And now I picked this up for like 20 bucks. I do have another one sitting in my closet. It's got... A big open wide mouth. I'm not a fan of that kind of mask, but uh, I do have it sitting in the closet. The ears. Okay, now this is not really stuff stuff because I got to get a styrofoam head for it, which I have in the back. I just got to dig it out. Okay, but anyway, that's another one of the masks. As you can see in the top here, it's all plastic, okay, or all latex, or whatever material it's made out of. Okay, not sure what company makes this. I'd have to look online. But it is a cool looking mask. So, enough about him. Put him down here. Boom. Okay, now, let's get into this guy right here. Alright, now this one here, coming around the corner, I believe it's the Ruby's version of the mask. Now, you'll notice in the eye, it is defective when I got it. And I had to do some trimming and reheating. It doesn't look half bad, but it doesn't look that good either. In the scheme of things, hang on a second, guys. There we go. All right, All right there we go. Pull them back so you can see them. Okay, now this one here, as you can see, is not as uh, highly uh, high quality or color or anything like that but it is a cool looking mask keep them centered okay when I wore this one here it was comfortable okay 
But like I said, it has a defect in the eye. When I first got it, I had to do some trimming. It's got a hole in the ear. Obviously, you got these little shot things. I forgot what they call them. But the eye is pretty much, um, I had to trim it down and reheat it. And this one here, as you can see, it is still defective. So the eyes in itself, the mask is, you know, it is what it is when you buy a Ruby's mask. It's hit and miss when it comes to these. But it is Frankenstein, so you can't really go wrong with that. You know what I'm saying? All right, enough about that. Let me show you what it looks like up close. Okay. Okay, that's what it looks like. You can see the eyes are defective. It's got a little scarring up on top. This one here, as you can see. It's being pushed out because of the styrofoam head. All right. It has a little hole in the mouth right here. So it is easy to breathe. Okay, so keep that in mind. And again, the hair, as you can see right here, it's still creased. I get to stuff it. Okay, there's not as much, there's a little bit of stuffing on top just to fill out the head, but I still got to fill out the back of it in order to, uh, in order for it to retain its shape. Okay, so I've yet to stuff this one a little bit more. Okay, but anyway, that's another Frankenstein mask that I have. Okay, all right, so get him out of the way. We'll put him right there. Now, we're going to get into this one here. This one's the Universal Studios version of the mask. And this one's got a nice color to it and everything. Okay, that's what he he looks like. Okay, the color scheme is very similar to the Trick or Treat Studios, except the Trick or Treat Studios is a smoother looking green. The shading is so much different, and obviously the one the Trick or Treat Studios has obviously real well not real hair but artificial hair where this is all plastic or latex. Okay. Okay, so let me show you what this looks like up close. Okay, now as you can see the eyes, and these are little eye holes. Obviously it's a blue bag, so don't let that fool you. Okay, All right. It's got the scarring up here. It's very similar to the uh, Ruby Tuesdays. Ruby Tuesdays. <laughs> the Ruby's mask, with the exception of the color scheme and the quality of this mask. All right, it's a little bit different than the Ruby's mask. Okay. Again, it's got a slit so you can wear it, no problem, breathing wise. Okay. And that's what she looks like. Let me pull that back. Okay, so now that right there says Universal Studios. See? It? Pull it in close. Now that's the Universal Studios version of the mask. Okay. And it's got a little slit up here where you can fit it. Now, the thickness of this mask. It's pretty much standard. It's very similar to Trick or Treat Studios. They're semi thick, but they're not super thin either, so that's a good thing. Enough about him. Next one we're going to get into is this guy here. Now that, my friends, is Herman Munster. <laughs> Alright. When I first got this mask, I already seen defects on it. I'm like, what's up with the eye? They literally, and I'm, they're because these are mass produced. Okay. The, um, as you can see, the head is really smooth. It don't really have any hair lines or anything like that. You can see fine lines in it. Uh, but the eye in itself was not painted because it's mass produced. I guess they overlooked it or did something to it. So I literally had to paint the eyes back in. So it has a semi, you know, natural look about it. And you're supposed to throw a little white in it so you get a gleam in the pupil. But anyway, that's my Herman Munster mask. That was the only defect that I got in the mask. It's also a Ruby's mask, okay? And I don't think anybody else makes a Herman Munster, which surprises me. Because he is a Frankenstein character. If it's out there, I didn't really look, look. But uh, I will tell you this about this particular mask. It is the texture of it. It's quite unique. The way they, now, Ruby's did a fantastic job on this. It's not movie or uh, TV accurate, but if you look at it, you say, oh yeah, that's Herman Munster, especially if you've seen Herman Munster. All right, now you can see the little defects in the eyes, okay? All right. The nose does have little holes in it, I believe. Yep, you can see it's got... 
right. It's got a little slit there so you can breathe through the mouth. The eyes are right here, the eye slits. These are all closed off. Okay, it's got a little scarring up here. And obviously the staples up here, or what do you want to call them? Holes in the ears, okay? Now, as you can see right here, it does say something. I'm not sure what it says. Most likely rubies or something. But that's what it looks like, okay guys? I'll check it out when I get the video going. I will have to edit this video in order to upload it, okay? But that's my Herman Munster mask, and that's what uh, it looks like up close. All right. All right, I got one more to show you, and she's a big one. So I'm going to have to literally sit it on the, on the table itself. It ain't a small one, that's for sure. I gotta reach over here and eat it. All right, there we go. Now what I'm gonna do is shut that off. Push it back. Get this guy here. All right, now I will show you what it looks like as it is too gigantic to show you, but you'll get an idea of what it looks like. Okay. This is my biggest hermit, not hermit monster. My biggest Frankenstein mask, but it's the most unique mask of the bunch. It does have the eye holes that allows you to see it. Now, when I wear this mask, it is big, okay? And it's got a little uh, styrofoam underneath it on the top of the head that sits on top of your head. And it fits really comfortable, but it's big, okay? I will tell you that. And it does have some very unique quality to it. The color schemes are absolutely spot on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up the camera so you can see what it looks like, okay? All right, let's start from the top here. Okay, he's got the, he's got a carpet type hair, which is pretty cool, okay? And it's got staples going through his head, okay? Now, like I said, I do have another video that shows all these masks, except for the Trick or Treat Studios. That's why I did another uh, version of the mask. Okay, and I will pull back so you can see what it looks like up. Okay, and it's got some very cool stitching to it. <coughs> Sorry about that. Okay. Now, the, the mouth itself does have a hole in it. <coughs> okay, and it's also got nostrils, so you're good to get. This is a very easy mask to breathe out of. Okay. And it's got the little hole right here, so you know the mask is not going to keep ripping up, okay? Now, down here... We'll show you what it says. I'm not sure. Let me turn it around into the light if I can. And then we'll read it. See what it says. If it's, re if it's re uh, legible. Okay, but anyway, that's what that says. It says something I can't remember. It's like, I don't know. But anyway, <clears throat> let me show you what it looks like from a distance. That's what she looks like from a distance, guys. It is a big mask, okay? Now, I could put it on and show you what it looks like. But I think uh, in my other videos, I do sh have it on. But it is a big mask. Anyway, that is it on my entire collection of Frankenstein masks. Hope you guys enjoyed this. And the main reason I did it was because of the Trick or Treat Studios mask. It came in a lot earlier than I expected, which is a good thing, okay? Uh, this is Pumpkin Horror. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell as I slowly, progressively, uh, progressively, slowly get some more masks and other things. I will show you once I uh, start creating those videos. I do have that Frankenstein video if you want to check out that NECA figure. I do have it online, okay? And that is my defective Ruby, uh, Ruby Tuesdays, no, Ruby mask. And then we got my Herman Munster mask here as well as Universal Studios, and that was a really nice one there. And my ceramic, and you got my Trick or Treat Studios one sitting in the corner. And then down there on the floor are my other masks. Okay, that's pretty much it in a nutshell, guys. Hope you like this. Don't forget to like and subscribe, like I said, and hit that notification bell. This is Pumpkin Horror. You have yourselves a good day.